Hi, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to include Windows commands into your workflow. Because there's some things that Alteryx just can't do, but can be easier to do within Windows. And while this ends up being a very simple workflow, we're going to walk through the steps of getting it accomplished because it can be a bit aggravating trying to get things to work just the way you want them to work when you're trying to run a command window program from within Alteryx. I was reminded of how much fun this sometimes is not to do when I was looking at a post on the Alteryx community site. And the user actually had a pretty simple problem and didn't know what to do and that is that every month I get a an XLS formatted spreadsheet not an XLSX formatted spreadsheet it has consistent data it's the same name it's just that the tabs change every month and he needs to read all of the tabs that are in that file now this is easy to do with an XLSX but not with a old formatted XLS and the question really becomes, how can you run this workflow without having to change things every time you need to run it? And to show you what we're talking about as far as the problem statement is concerned, we'll go ahead and bring up my Alteryx window. And we'll drop in two files to this. What I have here is... an XLS file and you notice I do not have the choice of importing only the list of sheet names if I could do that this becomes a very simple process as such I'll go ahead and bring in a test file that is an XLSX and you notice I have this import only the list of sheet names as an option so that's what we want to be able to do, but we have to get it out of this format and into the new format that Alteryx can handle much more easily. Solution actually is pretty simple. Windows has, a Windows Office has a command that you can run that will manually convert an old format. It's spreadsheet into a new formatted spreadsheet and then I can use dynamic input on an XLSX to read all the tabs from that file. Pretty simple but we have to get that first part taken care of. After a bit of research, since I knew this was possible, Google's a great place to get this research done, I was able to find out that there is a command Finding the command is a bit fun, so if you're actually following along with this, you need to find out where on your machine Office has stored exclcnv.exe. Now you notice how very long this statement is, and that's why it's in my editor. So if I want to run this tool, I give it the, these parameters, which is dash OICE the name of the input file and then the name of the output file and then it will convert it. Whenever you are doing something more advanced like this it is always a good idea to test into individual pieces. So if I copy that out I come over here to my command prompt window and I simply paste that in, execute it and you see that it works. So it took my dynamic input to .xlsx, .xls, and converted it to an XLSX format. And I can verify that simply by looking at the file date and time and see that it's been updated. So I know that this command works. Now I need to embed it into a workflow. But before I actually decide to embed it in the workflow, Let's test and make sure that we know how this will work and that we can actually get the workflow itself to run properly. So as you saw before, 
I want to drop in my input data. And I want to go ahead and open my spreadsheet and put on a list of file names. Run this quickly and you can see that one and two are there. What I want to do with this is to pass this into the dynamic input. There's a dynamic input. Why I couldn't see it the first time, I don't know. When you do this, you have to give it a template, and unfortunately the template we're going to give it is going to be the same as the file that we have, so you can't actually see this change when we change the file, but at least we can see how this will work for the one we know. We're actually creating the same input. We're going to look at tab 1, click OK, and you can see here that we have some values for A, B, and C. Click OK. But what we'll be doing is changing this input depending upon the data stream. And again, this data stream has the sheet names in it. So what I want to do is to go ahead and here in the modify SQL query, even though it's not SQL, I want to add, replace a specific string, text to replace. You see right there is that $1. So we'll go ahead and get rid of the quotes, the dollar sign. And we'll use sheet names as a replacement field. We click OK. We'll drop a browser on the end of this. Run it. You can see here that it actually read tab 1 and tab 2. And you can see that there is more data there than there was just in tab 1. So now we know this works. What we want to do is perform a conversion at the beginning of this. And we'll go back to, and actually just go ahead and delete off this. We don't need it. So we want to go back to our developer, and you have the run command here. The run command is useful because you can either pass input into it, which is the right source, or you can pass input out of it, which is the read results. In our case, what we're doing with this is going ahead and executing our command and going to take a look at the read results. Since we know what file this is going to be using, this is sort of standard. We go back to our target. And this is how we want to read that file. So when this is done running this command, it will go ahead and open up this file and give us a list of sheet names. And obviously what we want to do is in this workflow is to create that new spreadsheet. To do that, we have to give it the command name. And this is where I can fall back on my editor because I've already tested this and edited a copy of it. So what I want to do is to pull off that command. And simply paste it in here. You notice the quotes are gone from because it doesn't need to be in the quotes. We want to give it the arguments. And that's everything that comes after. And again, copying this out of my editor. We knew this worked. This should work here as well. Cross our fingers. And now we have the input going. So let's go ahead and run this. Now since this is creating a shell and running the shell, it takes longer to run the command through the widget than it does running it directly. So we'll need to wait for this to finish. It's finished. We can take a look at the output. And you can see that it actually has three in here because the file that 
we executed was input 3 for this conversion and the original file that was there was input 2 which had 2 so not only did we create a new file it then read that new file which is 1, 2, and 3 as opposed to the one that we had ran in a test of the previous file and we can look at the output and see that this is indeed then converted that file and gone through. To show you how this works, we can go back to input 2. But keep in mind that within the requirement of how this have to, had to work, we didn't need to do any name changes to run from time to time. But it's nice to run the test through here, so we'll run this test again. So the second running of this was against the two tab spreadsheet and we can see that one and two were red. So as we look at this, part of the thought process becomes that even though the problem statement was nothing that had changed, hopefully you can see how you can take this basic workflow and then extend it out into an application or a macro so you have more flexibility and more control over what's going on because the information stored within the command prompt and within the dynamic input can all be modified as a macro or an application. Now keep in mind that when you try this on your own, you'll have some false starts, you'll run into some issues. I know because I did as I was trying to build this. It's a bit tricky getting everything put together and working right. But as you persevere through it, you'll be able to use the commands on Windows to do work for you outside of what Alteryx can do. As always, thanks for watching. Drop in any comments should you have them. Please subscribe so you can see my new videos as I work on them. If you're having problems doing this on your own, again, send me a comment. And I'll take a look at what your problem is, post an additional video, or send you out some additional information that can help. Have a great day.